Hi everyone, welcome to Live View Tips and Tricks episode 2. Today I wanted to talk to you about clusters for neat data management. So basically, how to use clusters in an application to improve scalability, maintainability and readability of your code so you are able to work in the future with the same application without rewriting it. The goal of every programmer is to reuse as much code as possible and now I'm going to show you how you can use clusters to achieve that goal. So basically I started with a blank VI. This is the blank VI tester VI. I just saved it in my uh, tips and tricks folder. So here I have my tips and tricks folder for episode 2. And I want to create an application that's going to be able to generate signals and I want to be able to programmatically specify the properties of those signals and I want to be able to programmatically specify the number of those signals that I want to generate and I want to provide all of those signals to an Express VI. For example, an Express VI that is going to calculate for me an FFT of all those signals together. So let me quickly go to my generation palette since this is a uh, since this is an application that is supposed to generate something. So I'm going to go to signal processing palette here, waveform generation and basic function generator. So I added this basic function generator. The properties of a signal that I want to potentially be able to modify, let's say a signal type. So I'm going to click here, right click and create a constant. So this is going to be my signal type. I want to be able to modify, let's say, the frequency. So I'm going to create a constant for frequency. And I want to be able to modify the amplitude. So I'm going to create a constant for amplitude. OK. So I have those three values. And now, if I wanted to hard code, let's say, being able to generate five signals, then while holding control, I could drag all of those function generators like this. And here I'm generating basically five, uh, five waveforms. And is this the way that I want to go? Probably not, because, th because this is hard-coded. I'm generating five signals. And maybe I would like to generate more signals in the future. So let me just delete this. And let's say that I want to put this in a for loop. So if I put this functionality in a for loop, I will be able to easily generate as many signals as I want. So I'm going to put this in a for loop. And I'm going to specify, for example, the loop counter for the for loop to be a constant 5. So now I created a functionality which which is very similar to the previous functionality I'm just generating the signals in a for loop so okay let me provide the signals to the output of the for loop and now I want to be able to analyze those signals with an FFT so let me go to signal processing wave for measurements let me just start here um, signal processing wave for measurements and here I'm gonna choose spectral measurement OK. I'm going to specify that I want to calculate a power spectrum. OK. And now I will be able to just provide all of those signs that I generated here to the spectral measurement Express VI. And on the front panel, I can just create from the silver palette. I'm going to go to graph and I'm going to create a waveform graph. Stretch it so you can see. What's going on? OK, let's leave it like this. And to the waveform graph, I'm basically going to wire this power spectrum. And if I run this application, we will see that actually five sine waves have been generated. And all of those five sine waves are displayed on the same graph, the same frequency, same amplitude. So I want to be able to programmatically modify what's going to be generated. And if I decide that I want to create five arrays for all of those parameters, so let's say I want to create an array constant 
So from programming to array and array constant, and I want to put in this array constant, so three array constants, and I want to put all of those parameters here. So signal type, I want to put in one array, frequency in another array, and amplitude in a third array. There is nothing really protecting me from errors in this kind of application. So when I when a user specifies, let's say, five signal types, but he only specifies two amplitudes, and he wires something like this to the loop count, I'm probably going to get some errors. And besides, an application with, like that would not be very scalable and readable. So the, fa the proper way to go, I'm just going to get back here, the proper way to go is not to create three separate arrays for those parameters that I want to uh, specify. The proper way to go is to create a cluster that is going to logically re represent all of the settings that I want to specify for my signal generation functionality. So if I create a cluster, again the cluster is in the programming and the cluster constant in the variant palette, and here I have the cluster constant. I'm, uh, I'm creating it on the block diagram. So if I put all of those things into a cluster now, you will see that my cluster now represents all of the settings. I'm just going to arrange the uh, arrange those values here on the inside. And now my cluster specifies all of the settings for a function generation that are necessary. So now uh, the proper way to go is to create a type definition. If I want to use this cluster in multiple places in my application, not just here, but let's say in three different separate sub-VIs, and I modify it from here, for example, then those modifications would not propagate anywhere else in my application. So I, be, I would need to modify three clusters for those three separate sub-VIs to have this functionality modified. But if I create a type definition for this cluster, so I'm going to right-click and make type definition, so now this cluster has become a type definition control. And that means that whenever I modify this cluster, all of the modifications will be propagated through my whole application. So this is the way to go if you want to maintain scalability in your application and maintainability and readability. So I'm going to right click again. I will open this type dev. So this is a separate control now. I need to save it. So I'm going to save it in the same folder, episode 2, and I'm going to save it as settings. So this is my settings control. I'm saving it here as settings. OK. So I've saved it. I can modify the icon if I want to make my code even more readable. So I'm going to double click on the icon. And I'm going to just double click here on the selection, click delete, double click on the rectangle. And now I'm going to specify that this is settings. Let's say setting. OK. And now this is my settings cluster. I'm going to close it and save it. And if I double click on the border of my cluster here, I'm basically going to make it smaller with the icon representation. So now if I want to use those values in my application, I can go like this. I can, I, I still need to specify the, um, I still need to specify the loop count if I do not have a array wired to the input. So I'm going to remove this and I'm going to create an array of those settings that I have here. And if I created an array of those settings, that basically means, let me just double click, that I will be able to specify as many signals as I want to wire to this for loop for generating my waveforms. So I'm going to specify that this is a sine wave, this is a triangle wave, this is a square wave. This, let's say, has amplitude of half. Let's say that this has an amplitude of 0 0.1. Sorry, is this frequency or amplitude? Let me just quickly go to context help 
And this is another useful thing with your cluster is if you don't re remember what those certain positions in your type definition cluster stand for, you can just quickly go with Ctrl H, open context help, and you will see the names. So yes, this is amplitude. And let's specify that the uh, triangle wave frequency is going to be, let's say, 35. And this frequency is going to be 25. And now, the way that you use it is you use the unbundle function. So you need to go to programming, cluster, class and variant palette. Let me pin it down because I'm going to use it a little bit more. And let me unbundle this by name. Uh, firstly, I want to iterate through all of those uh, settings that, are, uh, that I created here in, a, in an array. So let me iterate through all of them. And now I want to wire them to my unbundle function. And I want to use the unbundle function to get all of the values here for my basic function generation. So let me go with signal type. Let me go with frequency. And let me go with amplitude. And now if I run this application, basically you will see that I generated these signals and I am providing them to my FFT. And this looks correct. So now the only difference is that this is still, remember that this is still hard-coded. This is still a constant on the block diagram. So I do not have an ability from my application, from my front panel, to modify what's being generated. It's still hard-coded on the block diagram. So if I want to make it programmatic, really, the only thing that I really need to do in this situation is right-click here and change this to a control. So now I have all of those signal settings as a control here. I can right click here, change the visible items to show the horizontal st scroll bar and to hide the index display because it's going to look a little bit more comfortable for me. And now, as you can see, I have those settings in an array and I can modify this array as a user. And this is going to allow me to generate anything that I want programmatically. So this is a scalable application. This is an application that can work with multiple waveforms without any modifications. And it's also readable because I see that all of the settings are represented with this one wire, with this one array. And I can just unbundle the settings that I need and use them with my basic function generator. Okay, so now if I want to generate something a little more, I can put all of this in a while loop. I will just wire here a stop button, create a control, a boolean stop button. I will have the stop button here. And let me just wire also from my programming and timing palette I will just wire a wait so this loop doesn't execute as fast as possible. Create constant, let's say 100 milliseconds per iteration. And now basically I will be able to run this and it's going to constantly generate some values for me, which I, I will be able to programmatically modify and see what's going on in my application. If I change the signal types, I will instantly get a different waveform graph indication. And if I add a new signal type, I can also do that. I'm going to basically get a new waveform graph indication. So this is how you use clusters to make your application more readable, scalable and maintainable. Also, another thing is, since you created this cluster, you can put all of this functionality that you have here in a for loop, you can put it into a sub VI. And if you remember from the previous lesson, from the previous episode, I set up a shortcut, a keyboard shortcut for putting my code into sub VIs. So I'm just going to click Ctrl F6, 
and I created a sub VI for all of this generation functionality which only requires one input which is the setting input I have an array of settings here and it provides one output which is the array of waveforms let me just save this with proper names settings array waveforms array at the output I'm gonna change this icon because it's still important for readability I'm gonna change this icon to a let's say generator okay and I'm gonna save it in the proper folder which is the generation function let's call it generation VI okay and now as you can see I have all of this functionality put into one sub VI I can easily copy it copy this sub VI as many times as I want and if the settings are modified if the settings cluster is modified so if I open the type definition again if the settings are modified they will automatically propagate to all of those generation VIs that I will use here okay so this is how you use clusters for neat data management please let me know what more would you like to see in this lesson like and subscribe to see the future episodes thanks